Okay, welcome everyone. Great to have you with us again for our fourth session, Engaging in a Time of Physical Distancing. Um, today we'll be looking at uh, how we might use SMS as to be part of your digital engagement strategy and we're thrilled to have the team from Bang the Table. Uh, um, and I'll get Dan to introduce that team in a moment. Uh, a few things we'd like to just go through, a bit of housekeeping. Um, we are video and audio recording these sessions and we'll send this out to you later. Um, we all are learning heaps from this process, so um, um, yes, it's good. Uh, place yourself on mute. Um, oh, we go back to the, place yourself on mute if you aren't already um, and not speaking because this just helps with background noise. If you need to grab a coffee, go for it, turn video off and mute. Um, uh, just avoids distracting people. And if you need to tell us something, use the chat function. Um, and you've all been, um, many of you have been familiar with using that function with your Zoom. So uh, we'd like to say thank you uh, for your uh, continuing involvement. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Um, and we're hoping that uh, you can, you'll use this, uh, what we're learning uh, like we are. Um, and uh, we'd like to also um, we'd like to say thank you for sharing your mobile numbers too, because that's going to help with this process of trying to explore um, uh, how SMSs might be useful. And um, we're, we've learned heaps about different tools. We're, we're learning about some, another tool today and we'll be putting you to work a bit later. Um, this whole thing doesn't work without you. So thanks for not just coming along and watching, but being involved. So, um, so that's that. Over to you, Anna. Yeah, um, well, I just want to say hello and welcome as, as well, but I'd also like to um, acknowledge the, the country that I'm uh, zooming in from. So I'm on um, Wajak Noongar land in the southwest of Western Australia in Perth. And Max? Wurundjeri country here is where I'm zooming in from, uh, Fitzroy in Excellent. Melbourne. So um, we like to keep a bit of a record of where everyone's Zooming in from, we've got people coming from actually not just Australia, but around the world too. Um, if you want to let us know where you're zooming in from, whether it be uh, the name of a town or the, um, the the country that you're that you're coming from, um, um, let us know in the chat function. Just pop it in there. Um, we'll just record that and share it with everyone. It's really nice to see where people um, are coming from. Um, and the stories that they have to tell about their, their place, just throw that in the chat function and we'll, we'll share that around. Um, I think, um, Max, we were going to talk just a little bit about whether we have some extra rules of thumb to share. Yes, yeah, so rules of thumb, I won't go through them all. We've been um, uh, collecting uh, lots of rules of thumb. One of the things that I've learned recently is uh, there's been some research about why Zoom meetings are so exhausting. And one of the things that uh, has been discovered is one of the things that makes it exhausting is when you're looking at yourself and looking at yourself on the screen uh, can actually be not just a distraction. It can actually take a lot of energy just looking at yourself and how you're coming across. So if you are doing a lot of Zoom meetings, you might want to hide your self view and you can do that by clicking on the little dots in your screen and saying, hide my um, self view and others can still see you. So it doesn't mean you're invisible, you're visible to everybody else, but you're not visible to yourself. And that makes a Zoom meeting less exhausting. How about that? Have you got any other tricks, Anna? I do, and it's actually a bit, it's a little bit about the video too. In the initial stages of Zooming and teaming and all of these video conferences, um, we all like to um, see what it looked like and play with the video. But as time's gone by, I think um, people have started turning their videos off in the middle of meetings. Um, partially to help with the bandwidth to um, improve the capacity of the internet to actually deal with how many video conferences are happening. Um, but also because it yeah, does start to get a bit exhausting looking at yourself. But I think my rule of thumb today would be that's good if you're in, the, if you're in a meeting and you're, you've got your um, video turned off um, to help bandwidth. But if you're about to speak, I think it's a really good idea to turn your video on something nice about seeing someone when they're speaking. And it also helps if, you're, if your video is off and you've got something to say and you turn your video on, um, that kind of indicates to the rest of the people in the meeting that you're ready to talk. So that's a nice way of sort of 
um, it's almost like clearing your throat before you speak in a normal sort of meeting. So that's my, um, that's the second rule of thumb from us for the day. I'm always happy to keep hearing them. So throw them in the chat function if you've got new ones. We'll add them to the list and send them out. Terrific. And I think it's now time to get on with uh, the focus of today's session, which is can SMS be part of our strategy? We've got uh, people from Bang the Table here. So Dan Popping, I've known for quite some time. Um, he's been um, a bit of a legend in the community engagement sector for quite a while. Uh, local government experience um, based in Adelaide. He's the engagement manager and practice lead for Bang the Table and has uh, designed this session. Uh, okay, Dan. Great. Well, thanks, Anna and Max, for the introduction. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name's Dan Popping and I work for the team at Bang the Table. We are a global company that specialises in digital community engagement and we provide uh, a platform, uh, Engagement HQ, to allow our clients and customers to uh, engage online and support them in best practice um, community engagement. Um, today, really excited and pleased to be here as part of the webinar with Anna and Max uh, to explore SMS uh, integration, that's text messaging. And so really today's webinar is about trialing and testing and, and giving it a go so everyone can experience firsthand um, uh, how this works. Uh, we're also then going to break up into some Zoom meeting rooms and Anna's going to manage that for us where we're then going to have a bit more of a detailed discussion around how SMS and text engagement might apply or be applied as part of an upcoming uh, engagement activity that you're running and we've got a staff member uh, in each of those rooms to assist with that conversation. Um, so the first SMS experience uh, that you would have actually already received, and that is if you gave us your phone number when you reg registered to the Zoom event, was actually that we sent out a reminder to everyone, and that was about 15, 20 minutes before the events started. And what we wanted to do was to show you how SMS can be used as a one-way uh, information drive, that is pushing information to people whose details we have. And so um, for me, I guess I associate this a little bit um, on the IAP2 spectrum at the inform level, and that is that we're just sending information one way uh, to your audience, and in this instance it was around, hey, the event you regist registered for was about to start, get yourself ready, make a cup of coffee, uh, and ready to get going. Um, and, and really that's a very simple and easy way of how SMS engagement can be applied. Um, but what we're going to do now is actually take a, a bit more of a deeper dive and we're going to demonstrate how it can be used to uh, actually collect feedback using SMS. So the first activity we're going to do is to send you uh, another message and this time it's going to be a question. And it's going to have three different options that you can choose from. And essentially what you need to do is uh, read the question, choose the option you want to re reply with, and then enter in that number, e.g. one, two, or three. Um, and the good thing uh, that we've done and how we've set this up is that your responses actually link to our quick poll tool that we have in EHQ. And in a moment, I'm going to share my screen and show you what that looks like. So that as people then start responding to that text message with their answers, the results stream directly in and we can actually see them happening in a live environment. So we'll send the question through to people now and I will share my screen to show you uh, what this all uh, looks like. And just bear with me for a moment, it's coming through now. So I think everyone can now see my screen here. This is an Engagement HQ page that we have set up. You will notice like most project pages provide context and background for what we're doing, uh, when things are happening and a bit of an agenda. And there's some FAQs and videos and, and a bit of information on the right hand side. But down the bottom here, you will see that we have the quick poll tool. And this is the uh, question that we just sent out via messages, which is, do you think there's a place for SMS to be used in community engagement? Now we are doing this retrospectively, so the results are already in, and we can see here that there, are, that there were a total of 58 votes uh, during this live session, with 81% saying yes, but used in the right context, 16% uh, saying maybe, and 3% saying no. So for me, uh, this is a simple kind of way or an example to show you how it can be used, um, a bit like a Vox Pop or an Intercept survey. So we're essentially asking people a question and they're responding with the values, the knowledge, the information, and maybe the uh, perceptions that they already hold and the attitude towards that question. So it's not a deep dive into engagement, but I guess it's a little bit like moving along the IP2 spectrum into the consult where you are seeking some form of feedback 
and it's becoming a two-way uh, interaction uh, with your respondents. And you could also send up a follow-up um, message with people about getting involved further or coming back to the website uh, and having a look. Um, now, the second activity uh, that we're going to do is actually to send uh, a, a third text message to everybody. And this time it's going to be an open-ended question. And so what we're going to do is rather than a simple, quick and easy response like we just did with QuickPoll, we're actually going to ask a qualitative question to collect qualitative data. And uh, this time for me, we're definitely moving into the consult level of the IP2 spectrum where it really is two-way uh, engagement and we're seeking feedback uh, from your community. In this example, we've actually linked your responses to the guestbook tool, and I'll toggle across to that tab now, so that when people respond using a sim, sim, uh, sorry simple sentence or a couple of paragraphs, all of your responses then will pull through onto our guestbook tool. You will notice here we've got some examples that have come through, and you'll also notice that they actually show that they're coming by SMS. So the um, people's responses will remain anonymous. Likewise, if people were using this tool uh, from a laptop and they have an account, you would see their screen name that they provided. So uh, where are we? Essentially, you can see here that there's a variety of responses that some people have put in. Some are longer than others. Some are simple one uh, responses. And if I flick through, you can see here that we had quite a lot of feedback from the people uh, in the session as I scroll back down, responding to the question, how could SMS be used in a community engagement process? Now, one of the other things uh, that we talked about was how we analyse this data, and we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail in the breakout rooms. Uh, so, Anna, I think we're probably ready to get going and move into those rooms now. Sorry, I'm just getting ready to send you all to breakout rooms at the moment. Um, you're all assigned to rooms. Um, Nicole, you'll be in room one. Jody and Johannes, you'll be in room two. Lauren, you'll be in room three, and Dan, you'll be in room four. Um, enjoy. Um, I'll pop in and out and see how you're going. Um, uh, also, if you do, if you can record in your room, please do. So you can set up that automation, which I really like too. Does anyone have any um, sort of initial comments around the guest book and this um, functionality or far away? You can unmute and jump in. Well, I pick on people. Dale, what's your thoughts? <laughs> um, I, I think the guest book's a great way of getting um, information from people and collecting those, those ideas back about um, what people are thinking. Um, but obviously, if, if you want more dialogue, then a different tool might be better to, um, to use. But as, as a one way of getting a quick question out and a quick response back, I think it can work well. Yeah. I think that's what we, um, we've discovered too. One of the um, applications might be the ideas tool, if anyone's familiar with that. If you're not familiar with Bang the Table, we have a digital sticky note. Um, and some of these responses, like you said, are, are quite short and sharp. They would look nice in that visual um, digital sticky notes display um, as well. So yeah, there's certainly a lot of expansion. You can see we're now over to four pages. Um, so quite a number of responses coming through. One thing that we are also exploring is that you could uh, potentially have a dedicated phone number to which people can post their comments when so it's kind of an opt in when when it's when it's uh, when they feel like maybe they've read something um, or they've been um, you know sent a document of sorts um, and and they they read through it and they can then um, be more proactive about submitting their feedback to a dedicated phone number so rather than bombarding them with an SMS you invited coming in into a specific phone number that then. Uh, tracks those comments so it can make it a bit more of an opt-in experience as well. Um, so there's a question in the chat, is it available yet? Um, right. Sort of, so this is kind of what we're exploring a little bit as is part of this, this SMS bit is how do we actually kind of find a good balance <laughs> between those two. Does anyone yeah, have any questions about sentiment analysis or SMS or any other great ideas about how this um, function might work or what some of the challenges might be? Yeah, just a, a thought about um, the question. It's interesting. I, I can see how useful the sentiment analysis is for open-ended questions. Um, this question wasn't really asking about how people felt about it. It was sort of more of a question to 
exploring how it might be used. Um, mm-hmm. So it's sort of it's interesting about how uh, to apply sentiment analysis to an open-ended question about you know how you might use it. But I think it just sort of um, shows that um, for sentiment analysis, it could be more useful for asking questions mm-hmm. about how how positively people feel about a particular thing then the sentiment analysis seems to be might be more more useful but anyway but it's great to see how it works yeah i think you raise a good point max um in some ways your data will only ever be as good as the question that you ask mm. um so that's why it's so important in the design phase to really drill down and think about what it is you're trying to elicit from your participants um mm. And it's not about gaming, you know, gaming your engagement process so that you can ensure you get the responses you need to tick the box and move on to the Mm. next stage of your project or development. But um, I guess it's really making sure that you're asking the right questions that will get the sort of data that will be helpful for you in making decisions down the track. Mm. Um, And yeah, you do raise a good point. I mean, you can see the tool is still working in that um, some of the ones which have been marked as positive, Mm. um, this one here says really helpful. So I imagine Mm. that that was definitely a green flag for the AI technology. Um, I think that's, I was thinking. This one is, oh, okay. oh, no, go on, Cindy. Oh, no, I was, I was thinking this would be really useful for um, councils when they do their, their customer satisfaction. So, you know, annual account, they need to mm. do their customer satisfaction. Mm. And it's such yeah. an, I feel like it's such an arbitrary process because they do it at a certain time of the year. They just randomly call people. And imagine if they use this when people actually transacted with the service, so actually used a library, went into a civic centre, you know, had a kind of a touch point and then used that to almost aggregate the results with kind of their annual, you know, once off. I don't, I'm not really mm. explaining it well, but I can imagine this being just, yeah, fantastic because you could keep it open for a year. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, and the good thing is too, um, if you were to use uniform um, you, well, maybe not uniform, but very similar engagements every year in the sort of thing that is legislatively um, mandated to complete, like, for mm. example, a customer satisfaction survey or health and well-being. plan feedback. Mm. Yeah, health and wellbeing. What you can actually do over a period of a few years is start to build a picture on how the community, in which direction they're moving. So with sentiment analysis, you know, you could literally just pull out those three little um whole graphs here at the top of the screen if you had three years worth of data and hopefully what you'd see is the green increasing Mm. you know the Mm. more that you would started addressing the issues that people felt strongly about Um, so i think that there's a lot of potential for this over the longer term to really be a really valuable tool Um, and that's what i'm trying to work with my clients to um, encourage is um, thinking in the long term and and building up some sort of strategy that will make sure you've got this data down uh, the track. Any so you can... support in responding to the second message that's come through? While we're all doing that, my daughter's also sending me a text message saying, is it okay if I use the Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure about anyone else, but it's certainly new days when uh, you're sort of sharing your internet access with your children. Um, I'm yeah. sure it's going to be fine in this instance. <sighs> and, uh, <laughs> Very interesting times at the moment. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you now again. Let's make sure I can do that all okay. And so what I'm doing now is just gone back to the uh, screen, which is where the SMS is taking place. So I'm hoping this is all going to work. Yes, we can see here now, and I'm not sure if you can see your, your individual responses. But this, uh, using this technology in SMS at the moment is anonymous participation. So rather than streaming in someone's name and and those details, you'll see here that it just says by SMS. Um, So to find your own, uh, you know, response, you'd need to sort of read that here. But I can see that people are now starting to provide their feedback, which is fantastic. So um, this is happening in a live environment. So we do need to refresh the screen to see those streaming in. I'm just going to check on page two here that it's all working okay. If I scroll down, a heap more questions, event reminders, regional responses, building relationships through frequent contacts. So we can see here that we've got some good responses coming through. Has anyone got any questions at this stage? No? Great. Well, look, there's one other thing that I want to show you and then I'll open it up for discussion. So often when you receive, uh, you know, qualitative information, particularly in a live environment, it's like, how are we going to deal with this? 
what's the flavour of the room, what are people sort of saying, and you can see here that we've got quite another number of responses, and it would take me a while to actually go through and actually, um, you know, review them all. One of the great things about Engagement HQ is that uh, in the back end, you can actually now do a very quick sentiments analysis on a particular open-ended question. So for those that aren't uh, familiar but are in the room, I'm actually showing you the back end of EHQ on the site that we're working on. I'm going to go down here to the reporting function and look at the text analysis. What I'm going to do now throughout my entire site is to choose the project that I want to run this report on, and that is our SMS event. I then choose the tool that I want to narrow down into, and this instance it is the guestbook tool. If I had a survey tool open or maybe one of our other tools, I could choose that as well. And then I can choose a date stamp to run this report. And in this instance, I'm just going to hit update and run my report on the guestbook tool with the results that I've got. So hopefully now, I'm just moving things around on my screen so I can see everything. It's just gonna take a moment to come through. What this shows me now is the back end and the data from this activity that we've just done, and it's streamed in the data from text messaging. So you can see here, it shows me the project and the question that we've asked. I've already pre-populated and clicked this little button here, which is for sentiment analysis. And it's telling me that there are 69 comments on the guest book that we've received, which is fantastic. And what this um, artificial intelligence does now is actually scans all of those comments and assigns it one of four attributes. And that is being negative, positive, mixed or neutral. And so instantly by looking at this chart at the top, I can see here that 5.6% are negative, 5.6% um, in yellow, uh, I've got to remember what that one is now, is a mixed response, 50% are neutral, and 38 or 39% are positive. So I've kind of got a good flavour at the moment from those comments that have come in, that you know, the majority of them are positive or mixed responses. Um, and when you scroll down in the reporting function on EHQ, you can see here that that chart has been developed by each comment receiving its own um, actual um, sentiment tag. So in this instance, the first one said, it could be used to reach parts of the community that may have bad or no internet available and it's given a, a neutral rating and a confidence level of 54.9%. What that means is I know how well the system has actually addressed that. And if I believe that that is a positive comment, I can actually override that by changing it myself to positive that would then update the data along the way. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to show you this extra kind of value add that we've got here in EHQ in using this data in real time events. And if we're in a town hall meeting, we could actually have that up on the screen and show the flavor of the room or the sentiment of the room to everybody through them sending us a nice quick message through SMS. So enough talking from me at the moment. I'm kind of keen to hear what questions you might have, but in particular, you know, your thoughts on how you might actually use SMS in uh, engagement activities. I have a question. Um, more about how you would go about actually setting yourself up. Like how would you get people to share their SMS, like their uh, phone numbers with you so you could actually use this? Yeah, Mira, that's a really good question. Um, so one of the things that we know is that um, people now are becoming more familiar with providing their details out to organisations and some people do prefer text messages. So for me, it's about providing that extra option of how they'd like to receive feedback by text, by email, uh, maybe via social media. One of the things you can do if you have a, have a website uh, for engagement is you could add that question and invite people to provide their phone numbers. It might be at an event, you collect that on arrival or it might be like what we did prior to, which is, you know, in signing up and registering for this event, we'd love to communicate with you through text messaging, you know, leave your details for us to participate. Um, I must say, I was interested to note that there were about a dozen people that have joined us today or said they were going to join us without providing their phone number. And I think that's fairly representative of some members of our community. They want to participate, but they're not sure. And so if you're doing something like this in a, a live event, a big town hall event or a big world, you know, cafe event, it may be that you do that on arrival and people could potentially come and join uh, once they see it happening. What other questions have you got? Do you think this could be, this could be useful? Do you think people would engage this way? 
Um, I'm not on mute, am I? No, Jane, but far oh, cool. away. I've just got my, I've just hidden myself for you and now I can't find myself to turn <laughs> myself back on, but as long as like you can hear me. Um, I, I was just, the thing I was drawn to actually was interesting. We have a big, you know, massive big um, area that we're developing out in West Apto and my engagement colleague has to do all these very instantaneous updates for people about construction. So I was more thinking in that sort of down and dirty engagement sort of construction it would have been really useful but we've just finished that big project but I think um, certainly for um, you know event registrations and and things like that um, I think one of the things for me is that privacy issue of people giving over their mobile phone numbers mm. um, I think we're on the cusp of that because we're all getting more of those notifications you know oh, Australia Post says you know where do you want it delivered and you know we're getting a lot of those things coming to our phone but whether we'd opt in I don't know that's just my thing. You know, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, have others got some comments around privacy and getting people to sign up? Mm. Um, I had a say, hi, it's Kel. Hey, everyone, apologies for being late. Um, I think one of the things, and Jane's alluded to it a little bit, is because we're becoming more conditioned to it, being part of the way we do engage, that there's, I guess, an opportunity to add this to the way we're currently connecting get some confidence and then amplifying those positive experiences so that mm. people can see their trusted colleagues, friends, community members using it and share some of those stories about where it's been really successful. Because um, I know when we have used anything that's been uh, a different technology as opposed to anything new, sharing those personal trusted experiences of how it worked well and why it was really easily accessible um, was helpful. So just interested if there's any of that individual um, experience elsewhere for others. I'll pipe up. <laughs> I, actually reckon, I actually reckon if you have a couple of good experiences um, and most of the tools have some form of video that you can share with people and that's great but it doesn't necessarily give people the experience of how it works. Um, I think things like this with your clients um, I think they're a really good way to sort of share how it works. I think with this stuff, you've almost got to play to know how it works. And, and one of the reasons that we really enjoyed doing these is because we're actually playing with a ton of little tools and it's great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> no, it's a good for that. Uh, I like the fact that it's direct. Because mm. uh, there's no other action that people have to take to get involved. They don't have to go and look up a web page address or, uh, you know, go from a poster to, a, to somewhere else or come to a meeting. It's just right there in front of them. And, very fast for them to do. And I can I see how... Have... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry, thanks. Um, I can see, it's Catherine, hello. Um, I can see how it can happen um, during the Australian Citizens Parliament. We had computers at every table and we were collecting information from people and that information was going to a back room and it was being very quickly themed by about half a dozen people and then it was projected back into the room. This is just such a such a much more simple way of being able to capture live data and give a sentiment back to people around a whole bunch of different things. I think it's a I think it's a really nice and very simple intercept. And I think that we are starting to trust. Trust is part of our practice. And yeah, I think it's a interesting tool. I would also, I just would like to add as well that um, more people have mobile phones than um, necessarily computers in their homes. So I think we could also um, imagine that we could get broader representation because we've created um, accessibility um, through the, the mobile phone and the SMS. It's, 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 it's inclusive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I wonder in that in that um, instance whether we'd get better participation from younger demographics mm. who are responding in that more sort of I respond now or not at all sort of way, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it could even be used in you know like a public square situation for people to give immediate feedback on spaces. You know, if it was up on like with you know um, live mm. boards or something like that. It's just it's a very simple, quick whole um process 
Yeah, and I, and I think this is a thing that I'm finding quite interesting. I, um, I'll talk about some of the application in a moment, but I just want to go back to the comment around kind of um, privacy and getting people to sign up because I think we, we have that challenge already, right, in our engagement mm -hmm. around trusting the organisation, trusting giving your details to a group. And you might have noticed that one of the things that we did on the Zoom meeting when we were collect, uh, sorry, the Zoom meeting invite uh, was when we were collecting or asking for your phone number that we did remind you of the privacy policy policies that Bang the Table have and what your data is used for. And I guess that'd be a little tip worth sharing back that, you know, it's like anything, you want to kind of build that trust and demonstrate that through providing your terms of reference or your kind of data security so that people can look at that first, go, yes, they're trustworthy, they promise they're not going to use it for anything outside of, you know, this or to share it with any, any, anyone else. Um, but I still think that's going to be a challenge. And what I'm finding quite fascinating and intriguing is that we now potentially have another method to engage and get broader engagement. You know, I don't want to come to a face-to-face -face event. I don't want to sign up to your website and join a discussion forum, but I'll happily respond to some polling questions over a period of three months. Or I could text through my thoughts uh, knowing that they're going to be heard and, and written on a, on a board. And so for me, like most of the tools that we're playing with and that we're utilising, it does need to be part of your engagement strategy. It still needs to be well thought out and serve a purpose for the people that you want to engage with. Um, in regards to application, I, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but I love the idea of having a live board, you know, people in a public mm. space, you know, um, come up to our desk and, and send us your message here or, or respond this way. There are other uh, SMS tools out there like Event Poll that I've seen used. Uh, this one with SMS Media that we've partnered with, I guess, just integrates with our systems quite well. And we want to offer a solution for people that want to kind of use these tools. Um, but yeah, what other applications do you think we can use it for? Um, I've got a question. So can people sign up by sending an SMS? Is that one of the ways that they can sign up? So it could be you can actually post a question and then responding to that question does sign you up. Would you like to sign up being the first question to receive questions? Yes, you could. Or, so if you had an existing database of phone numbers, um, that would certainly be, be one way. Um, you know, in regards, it might be seeking their permission to, you know, would you, you know, hi, John, or hi, whoever, you know, we're sending this because you've been involved in past activities or on this list, you know, would like to invite you to uh, provide feedback on some topics, you know, would you like to sign up? In that instance, we would need to um, either ask them to respond with a phone number so that you could then download that data and upload it back into your system. Or like most people probably would, is you would invite them, include a hyperlink and invite them to register to your site where you would collect that phone number. For me, I guess I see this as a way into greater kind of registration and participation. It's that first step. You know, I don't want to do it just yet, but I want to start contributing. And once they start contributing and see that they're being heard and, and valued, they're likely then to come into deeper kind of activities. Uh, so I'm not, I think my question actually was, sorry mm. to clarify or, or if you answered it and I missed it. My question is, can people send a text message to a, from their phone as a way of signing up. Uh -huh. So this is me, this is me signing up. Um, yes, that is possible. I just have to give some thought around how that would take place because that message would need to come into um, an account somewhere and then join a list that then is uploaded to kind of receive future ones. So probably a bit of a, a bit of tech that would be required behind there or manual, but yes, you could do it that way. Yeah. That you'd like so to. they'd need to be like a, a, a phone number, for example, that was set up that they could, you know, text this to sign up. Yes. Uh, okay. another, just thinking out aloud, another way that could be done is that perhaps you could uh, have it streamed into something like the guest book tool, but actually not publish that on a project page so it's not visible. And then you could download a report from EHQ that have those phone numbers in it. You know, so in the morning, 20 people had registered or, or sent through, and then you could upload them into your system to then start to send out messages. Hmm. What about large events? I, I really like the idea that sort of this polling could take place when you're bringing together large and diverse groups of people to get a flavour of the room. Um, do people think that it could be used in that context? 
Um, yeah, that's why I was wondering if it could, that's where I think it could be if people could actually, and particularly young people, removing all of the barriers, they have their phones on them. If it's as simple as sending a text message to a number, then I think that that's a very um, reduced barrier. So yeah, I could see that that would work really well. From my knowledge at the moment, that can be done and you'd need to sort of set it up, but it's certainly something for us to think about around rather than actually replying to a message of sending a message to a number that automatically pulls through. And I think that would even make things easier in those kind of environments. So that's some good feedback for me to take back to the team and investigate a bit, a bit further. Uh, Dan, just a question. Um, I've used Slido to get that kind of sentiment um, in larger forums. Um, is there an advantage to this particular um, SMS um, system we're talking about as opposed to Slido, which is also using a mobile phone and, you know, providing feedback onto live? Uh Look, I'm, I'm going to say yes and no. I think in regards to a lot of the tools do very similar things um, and I'm not that familiar with Slido to be honest, but what I, what I know is the benefit of having it pull through to an existing EHQ site, so clients that we work with, is that then yeah, you get access to the full reporting functions and mm -hmm. so it, it allows you to potentially continue that conversation you know, further provide the results, use the data analytics that's available within the system. And I gave you a little insight into the sentiment analysis quite quickly around, you know, you can, you can get a flavour of the room doing it that way. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure in regards to, you know, are we better than any of the other competitors? Mm. Um, I think it's, it's emerging technology. I have used, uh, what did I mention before? Um, a poll anywhere, I think it was called, in a mm. couple of live events, which, which does uh, similar activities as well. Um, and I think for me, the value is that linking back with existing software that our clients have just means they don't have to purchase something new. They don't have to, you know, go through their IT department, that it's it's simply a, a, an add-on that links with EHQ quite easily. Mm. But I'm open for any feedback of any clients or non-clients uh, around their thoughts of other tools. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah, we're we just curious. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead if you like. Oh, okay. No, no, I was going to say, um, similar to the picking up on, on those comments as well, we've used Slido, Mentimeter and um, Poll Anywhere. We found particularly, uh, we've had some fairly volatile situations in community where we've had to do um, large and small scale engagements, particularly coming out of Hazelwood Mine Fire and a range of other things where there's been um, a level of you know community outrage around things that have been happening and it's been fairly volatile in that sense it gave us a really um lovely level of distance to be able to engage in a way that didn't give that escalation in the room um, but it did have that limitation around being able to provide back to the group more broadly subsequent to the meeting some of that analytical review and some of that reporting and data that some in the room actually wanted they wanted to be able to take away that tangible very clear concise information around the evidenced approach to gathering the information um, so I, yeah i find those other tools are also great really well received um, but sometimes there are some of those limitations around being able to get that information back in a really transparent trusted way out to the group more generally yeah, sorry to to jump in no that's that's good feedback i think Mira, you were up next uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I was just curious, if you're getting your phone numbers from like a database of registered EHQ participants, can you do any kind of demographic analysis or is it, or is it always anonymous, essentially? Um, at this stage, it's anonymous. It's a really good question. And I guess this is something as we're experimenting and building on our tools around how that links back with your profile. So it is certainly our intention that if you provide a phone number as part of your participant profile on the site, then rather yep. than coming through as anonymous, it would actually note yeah, that's Dan Popping and then it would pull through my screen name that I've provided on sign up and say Dan Popping. Yeah, cool. Or Dan P or Danny Boy, whatever I choose to, to kind of have some... <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> level of an anonymous participation um, and you know let's not forget too guys that I, I think the value of this is that early entry into engagement it's you know as we discussed that broader reach for people that don't want to come to a full-blown event but it's about 
dipping their toes in the water. And also what I like is about closing the loop. And I think, um, Kel, you touched on this, that after an event or an activity has taken place like today, and, and I'll give you a spoiler alert, we are going to do this guy with you guys. We are going to send you a follow-up text message saying thanks for participating, and we're going to invite you to do one last activity as well. And so for me, it covers that whole kind of engagement process around, you know, all your planning and activities, the actual doing, and then coming back and closing the loop. Thanks very much. This is where you can find the summary report. Or, you know, we had this many people attending. If you want to continue the conversation, this is the place that you can go. Um, you might re-invite them to an upcoming event or activity, or you might just leave it as that. And we're very mindful that on sign up, we said that we weren't going to use your phone numbers for anything outside of today's event. So once that um, text message comes through, that will kind of be it from, from our end. And, um, you know, we will destroy and I will eat uh, all of your phone numbers never to be used again. <laughs> So we're about to be pulled back in. What I'm going to do is to stop recording our session that we've got here, which I think I can. There we go. Um, so this is today's one. Um, and you can see here, it's just doing its thing in terms of sentiment. From today, 50% neutral, um, which is pretty much what I would expect from the question we post. Um, and then 40% positive. 5% negative, 5% mixed. And you can, yeah, go through and see where, you know, this is 99% because it's picking up on the sentiment of brilliant. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's really interesting where you can start to dive into, even from these one-liners, what, what is coming through from the, from the audience responses. And I, I like that you can um, go and change that sentiment too if, if, if it's yes. interpreted incorrectly, which happens rarely, but sometimes if they misinterpreted what people are saying because there's some sarcasm or something in there, you can actually yeah. change that and um, um, tidy it up before you pull your report out, which is really handy. Yeah, exactly right, Dale. And then you can also um, download, so into a format, if you've got to produce a report, um, you can extract, you can search through comments. So we can say, oh, we wanted, someone said it was brilliant. Who said it was brilliant? Um, and narrow down on that too. I can add tags, you know, there's already an existing one, but I can add a new tag and then I can start to filter. So if you had hundreds or thousands of um, text coming in, you could add a bold tag and then start to filter all the tags that said um, about SMS, if you're asking about channels maybe of how you want to communicate with them. Um, you can also look at the demographics um, as well. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different ways you can play around with our reporting functionality. Um, sentiments are fairly neutral. Um, if there's anyone who hasn't got it activated on their site at the moment, um, feel free to reach out to me or your engagement manager. Dale obviously is already using it, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's a relatively new feature that some people um, who are Engagement HQ users haven't even explored yet. So. Yeah, it's really cool and really simple. Like you saw, it, it, the machine does the work. <laughs> Nicole, can I just ask a question about the tags? Does it have to? Is it specific to exactly the way the tag is written? Like, if somebody wrote COVID space nineteen, would that still pick up? No, so they are case sensitive. Um, so one of the things we always try to educate with clients is around having a tag library. Um, because if someone uses an acronym as well, um, someone might use coronavirus and someone uses COVID-19 and you're actually trying to capture them together. Um, mm. So having a set sort of library and standard for the way that you tag projects is really important. Same with participant tags. In our system, you can tag participants, but if someone tags councillor um, of districts and someone tags district councillor, um, you're going to start to see a, a mismatch in your library. On why. Uh, that's a really cool use mm -hmm. case and uh, quite frankly we haven't in, in our uh, realm looked at that yet but I know um, that the Australian government is actually doing that right with the um, they've got a channel on WhatsApp where um, that's that's not that COVID safe app, but on, on WhatsApp if you uh, send an, um, to a specific number you send uh, an SMS and basically what comes uh, you know, WhatsApp and what comes back is a menu of, of options so like information on, on travel uh, you know the latest um, um, numbers um, any other news and so that the government have uh, built quite a nice little way where it's kind of a continuous way for the community to get get updates and so every time you reply you get that menu back saying you know reply zero for this one for that two for that so 
the, the ability to kind of uh, find routes and pathways for uh, SMS to be triggered based on certain responses is, is certainly there. It's a little bit complex and kind of thinking through at the moment how that might be used. So yeah, I love your question. Is that, is that based on the fact that you've seen it with WhatsApp and the Australian government using it that way? Yeah, yeah, cool. I, I thought that was really quite uh, neat as well. It's quite interesting, uh, WhatsApp. Um, so with WhatsApp, you can build these, these bots already. Um, what you can't do with WhatsApp yet is have one-way or two-way conversations on a sort of personal level. Um, so for example, with SMS, what you can do is, um, I've done that to a couple of people that have sent uh, an SMS reply back to the reminder, um, you know, asking where the link is and, and when it starts. So you have the ability to actually reply back personally, whereas with WhatsApp, you can't do that yet. Um, WhatsApp is, is owned by Facebook, as probably most of you know, and they have kind of locked that down for the Australian market for some reason. So the only way to use WhatsApp uh, at the moment um, as a business is to set up these, these bots where you say, okay, I'm going to send automatic replies back based on um, the, the SMS or the, the WhatsApp message I get in. Um, Welcome back, everybody. It's always, I, I don't know, you guys probably don't get to experience it, but it's always quite fun to see the thousand faces pop back into the screen. Um, I really enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's the Brady Bunch on steroids really fast. How are you, Max? You're on mute. Unmute, I'll unmute you. <laughs> Oh, you must have had me muted. I was unmuted here. Anyway, yeah, it was good. Interesting um, conversations and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. I popped into a few of the rooms and um, people were uh, at different stages of a very similar conversation quite often. So that was quite interesting um, to see. But um, as everyone comes back, we've nearly got you all back now. Wish you a big room today. It's very exciting to see so many not talking heads. <laughs> My screen's just got lots of lots of little red muted voices. Now you know that we're going to do the report back, but we because uh, we thought it might be a little bit easier for the hosts to do that. Um, so um, I think we'll just go from room one to room four because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, so Nicole, key takeaways from room one. What have you got? Yeah, we had some really good conversation in our group. Um, some of the key points that we raised were around trust um, and getting people to, um, a, a, making sure that people understand that it's a verified message and, you know, it's not someone masked as their local council, perhaps, um, intruding on them. And also, um, yeah, keeping that trust. So if someone was to um, uh, opt out, how do you manage that and making sure that you can still involve them in the wider engagement strategy. A um, couple of good questions which I might get to at the end, um, perhaps Johannes can um, answer them so I'll, I'll get to them after but we had some really good conversation around the use case for live events but also as another channel um, when there's so much noise at the moment and everyone's vying for uh, some attention from the community members. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming that most people spoke a bit about security at some stage and that was kind of the one thing that we discussed too. But it's really interesting because um, we occasionally get thrown into communities that have got really poor internet service, um, but most people now have some form of um, mobile phone. So it's, it's also a really nice way to sort of deal with that, um, those sorts of communities where the where internet is not um, quite so quite so easy to come by. Um, I'm going to throw to Jodie from room two. Jodie, who are you? Uh, oh, just unmute myself. Hi, Anna. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, um, it, was, it was great to kind of field some additional questions around SMS, um, a few kind of the key ones that kind of popped up, um, similar to Nicole in that, you know, there's a lot of noise at the moment, so there's the risk of um, SMS fatigue potentially, you know, um, being wary of the amount of communication that people are receiving and the different um, forms of communication that they're receiving. And I, I, I think, you know, SMS is actually offering an alternative method at the moment, which hopefully is, um, you know, refreshing to many people that probably have been and are getting sick of being bombarded by just email. Um, we talked about how um, there was a really good question around how 
um, SMS could help to prompt those next steps within organizations. So for example, you know, select one um, to request more information, for example. Um, so there was some conversation around that and the various different stages that SMS can play um, within engagements um, quite often. And a lot of the examples that have come through that we can see are around um, a, a lot of events, you know, and sending um, and sending SMS prompts to invite to engagements and to invite to invent uh, to events. So um, I think that initial stage of engagements, um, we're really seeing that value, um, but also exploring those different stages as well. So yeah, there was there was some good questions around that. Right. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone: if you've got any questions, now's a really good time to put them in the chat function. I've I've got a little list here that we'll start going through, but. Um, there's there are a couple of there's a couple of questions and answers already in the chat function. Um, just for those who haven't used it, if you use the webinar tool, the question and answer component is much much um, more efficiently dealt with because there's actually a Q and A button at the bottom, and the questions and answers get sort of questioned and answered in a really formal way. Um, but the webinar tool is not quite as good for a conversation. So we've We've opted for the meeting tool um, regularly rather than the webinar tool. But if you are going to do something where you're asking lots of, you want lots of Q&A, I would opt for a webinar tool instead. Instead, um, I'm going to pop to Lauren um, and I'll keep an eye on all the questions coming through and then we'll start asking those after we've done room three and four. So Lauren, go for it. Uh, thanks, Anna. So um, I won't take up much time because um, some of the issues that we discussed in group three have already really been covered really well by Nicole and Jody. Um, and I'm keen to get on to answering the Q&As in the chat. Um, but one thing I think that really dominated um, our discussion was um, how you make sure that you're not imposing on people's privacy. Um, and the importance of making sure that if people provide their mobile number that you've been really clear and really distinct about what that purpose might be um, and framing that in a way that shows people it's to improve their experience. It's not just to become a one-way street where you're just pushing out information to them or trying to sell them ideas or products, but that it's very much about um, increasing their access um, to the different consultations that might be running to make sure that they can be heard with issues um, that are really important to them. Um, so that was one thing that we touched on in quite a bit of detail. Um, but we also talked about maybe some good project types that might be really good for this format. Um, one of those which I thought was an excellent idea was reaching younger people and um, and those who may be struggling with sort of sensitive issues like alcohol and drug abuse um, and having that SMS and that really short, quick response is a, is a good way to get to people who always have a phone handy but may not always have, you know, reliable internet access as Anna touched on. Um, but also um, someone mentioned that this would be a great tool for citywide budgeting and when you're doing um, some participatory budgeting and you're trying to get a sense from the community about where their allegiance lies in terms of where spending should be, that um, the quick poll tool in particular would be fantastic just for a really short, sharp response on on what's most important and what should be prioritized right um, I'm going to move quickly to Dan so we can get to those questions oh oh can you hear me now yes um, very similar to the other groups uh, we started off uh, with a question around how do we get people to sign up and that really comes back with trust and I use the examples uh, that we um, came up with uh, practically for this session is that when we did ask the people on registration for their phone number, that we actually provided a link to our privacy policy and outlined how and where this data would be used. And I think, you know, once again, that's, that's really uh, important. Um, I think jumping to some of the practical applications is my favourite part. So I loved one of the ideas that came through in our team around if you were, let's say, updating or seeking feedback on a public square, that you could actually do it in real time with a display board, uh, people coming up, providing their, their text comment and, and being able to see it uh, quite visual um, straight away. And the other example I liked was sort of after engagement. Often we spend lots of engagement on infrastructure projects. And this could be a really nice way at the end of that engagement to say, would you like to be kept up to date with the build or with this pro with this project? And they could then potentially receive text message updates, you know, hey guys, we've pushed down the building, we're, we've laid the slab, I don't know, the, 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 the building is now half com completed and a nice way to kind of keep that conversation going uh, with communities. Um, so they were sort of two of the good examples uh, that we had. And there was a bit of discussion around how we think this can actually help with broader engagement, broader reach and tapping into other, other um, you know, people that we don't hear from often. Cool, great. 
Um, so I'm going to throw to some questions. Um, I, there was one way earlier in the discussion that um, slipped through before we went to breakout rooms, and it was with the with the poll that you had. Can you answer that more than once, or can you do a setting so you can answer it multiple times? Great question. So we did test this out actually, and we've set it up so that people can only respond one, uh, respond once with that text message. And when you do try to game the system and send a question, it actually you get a response saying, "Sorry, you've already submitted a response." So um, I think that's a nice little feature to stop people from gaming it and you know sending the number three 20 times, hoping that it would then sway. And you know I'd be really concerned if you had a quick poll where you were going to take that data really serious to make an important decision. I think that yeah. may not be the right tool to make. So once again, it's the right tool in the right context. Yeah. Um, there was another one, uh, so it was, it was a question that's in the chat, but I think it's worth answering out loud. Uh, Johannes, I think you answered it, but um, can message media translate videos for cold communities when you push them out? So for culturally and linguistically diverse communities, when you push them out, does it auto-translate? Uh, I think you answered it already, but maybe you want to share for the whole group. Sure. Um, it's a great question. Um, it hasn't really, I haven't come across that question uh, per se yet. Um, so with message media and what we've shown you today, that's, that's, um, it's all text-based, right? So there's no calling in or, or outgoing, uh, outbound telephone calls. So the answer to that would, would be simply no. I, I don't know if there are other tools that do allow you to, to transcribe telephone calls. I would imagine so, but yeah, I can't really speak to that. I've not looked into that too much. But in, in the realm of what we have shown today, no, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah. So anyone who is in the call who does have an answer to the question, um, in terms of the, is there other tools, just pop it in the chat and we'll share that um, with everyone. Um, there was another question about um, security of people's information. I think Dan sort of mentioned, has already explained that. When we send the report out, we'll send another link to the security information, Dan, so um, you can sort of see the answer to that question in black and white. Um, and there was another question in one of the discussions that I had, which was, um, if we have a public event, can the SMS be to a geographical radius and not a phone list? It was answered, it was answered in the breakout room, but I think it's worth sharing because it's quite interesting. Um, so I think that was your room. Again, Jody, Johannes? Could you read out the question again, perhaps? Yeah, um, if we have a public event, so say you've got 150 people in a room, can the SMS be to a geographical radius and not a phone list? Um, I don't, no, that wasn't in our room, but that's a good question too. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean you have the ability to split uh, groups based based on uh, um, location, but that's location that would have been provided previously. So there's no geofencing um, uh, capability uh, on that. No, um, but there's segmenting capability. But it's it's you would have to kind of know where people are um, ahead of time. So, for example, if you were to run uh, three or four workshops and you know exactly who has attended, you could route it based on the attendance of each workshop, for example, uh, but it wouldn't be geofence, no. Great. Um, there's a couple of other questions and answers. Uh, we're actually going to run out of time because um, everyone's been so chatty, um, actually. But um, no, it's been fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, we are going to... Um, so Max has got an emergency alarm, so he's um, gone on silent for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we'll do we'll do a bit of a thank you. Um, thank you very much to uh, the Bang the Table people for coming along and sharing their tools, um, which is a st sentence that I've said far too often lately. <laughs> um, thank you very much to all of you. You know, as we keep saying, we can't do it without you. I'm going to put a link to a poll in the um, chat function because I, sorry, I'm not going to just send it to Max. I'm going to send it to everyone. Um, we've already asked you a couple of times what you want to hear more about. Um, and the poll actually already has some, um, some suggestions in it and you can upvote those so that we'll, we'll get a sense of what really is exciting. You don't necessarily have to add a new one, but if you go in there and have a look, you'll, um, you'll get a chance to either vote on someone else's or add new ones. Um, I guess from us, uh, we will also, Bang the Table will also send out a final um, text message one because we want to test the original poll against your exit thoughts. Um, so that will come out too. Um, but very much from Max and I, a massive thank you again. Um, we'll be back in touch, as you know, with the next event. 
Um, and a huge thank you from me. Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday, Max. Yeah, the alarm's over now, thankfully. Um, uh, we probably didn't get to every question, but for those we didn't respond to, we'll have a go at getting a response to them, either from the uh, Bang the Table team or we'll have a crack at it. So um, thanks heaps, everyone. It's been brilliant. And we'll see what we come up with next, probably in another couple of weeks, you reckon, Anna? Yeah, probably. Yep. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Okay. Really